Hey guys, welcome back. I want to change up the pace for this week's video. I want to slow things down a bit and I feel this week's content is the perfect opportunity for that. Hey Siri, how long does it take to boil a mud whelk? Succulent mud crab. <laughs> we don't want succulent mud crab, I can't catch a mud crab. I find while editing, it's sometimes a tricky balance of keeping an engaging pace while also trying not to go too quickly that I put you, the audience, through a whirlwind. This week, however, I'm aiming to convey what a full day looks like living out here in the wild aboard our sailboat. We've got a ground coming in, so you can see it's too shallow. We're a little bit silly. I'm gonna need a bucket of water. Okay. Morning, up an anchor. It's very close to being where I need it to be to lift. So here we are, out in the wild in a remote region of Australia known as the Kimberley. Here we have taken a step back from our place on top of the food chain. I know I don't want him walking into my shower so I won't walk into his. And are living humbly off the land alongside the limited food stores we have remaining aboard. While our fridges are still fairly stocked, our freshwater levels are getting pretty low, so it's time we start looking for another waterfall. Today's journey will take you through a day in the life of a couple of sailors in search for water. What's that manoeuvre? This? Yeah. Bucket uh, foot. Bucket foot. So this is our new davit system. <laughs> I was too lazy to raise it and flip it over onto the foredeck. We're only going a couple of miles. I don't know how it would hold up in, you know, fair conditions, but you know, for the conditions we're in, it's just pretty good. <laughs> in all honesty, like when it's tired on there, we were rolling last night a bit when some weather, like wind came through for an hour or so, and it holds really, really firm. It sort of locks into our um, gunnels, there's a little ridge in them. We can get the ridge of the tender in the gunnels and then tie like a bow and a stern line on it. It's pretty solid. Like you would obviously, if you were doing a proper sail, you wouldn't put it there, but for just motoring around, we have just lifted anchor in Maya Cove, and this morning we're aiming to stop off at Jar Island to find some hidden treasures before continuing on to Freshwater Bay, which, by the sounds of things, might be promising for that freshwater we're after. Although this morning started with a sail, most days aboard Nakama start with a good brekkie. <sighs> Alrighty, so while we're having some breakfast, we thought it would be a good time to say thank you and introduce you to this week's video sponsor, NordVPN. Since our time in the Kimberley, so many of you have commented about being inspired to travel, but we understand not everyone wants or has a boat. So we've teamed up with NordVPN who are offering you four bonus months on top of a two year plan, which will help you to stop overpaying when booking a holiday of your very own. <laughs> Firstly, what on earth is a VPN? Well, it's a virtual private network that keeps your information secure while you're online. NordVPN also hides your IP address, which enables you to browse the internet as if you're in a different country. When it comes to booking a holiday, this feature is really, really handy and can save you hundreds of dollars when booking things like hotel rooms, car rentals, or flights, as booking websites 
often display different prices for different countries. So by using NordVPN, you can shop around by switching your location, never overpaying for a car, hotel room, or attractions again. Let's go surfing. As NordVPN is one of the world's largest VPN providers with service in 60 different countries, it's our VPN of choice. As our entire livelihood is on the internet, from university to work to, of course, YouTube, having NordVPN is the extra layer of protection we need to keep our online data safe from potential cyber threats. We're also massive video streaming fans, so inspired by last week's World War II plane wreck, Slim's been putting us virtually in in Taiwan so we can watch Band of Brothers on Netflix as it's unavailable in Australia. So guys, by using the link in the description below or our code Slim and Soph, you'll get four bonus months on top of a two year plan. And with a 30 day money back guarantee, there's nothing really to lose. So you can check it out all for yourselves and we're gonna go check out Ashore. Being able to get out of the dinghy stress free. Just go like, oh, yep, I can see like 10 meters, the water's not brown, and I can't see any drop of This is such a beautiful little beach. A little cove, it feels like. I'm surprised how clear the water is, especially considering that we're like on the inside of the sort of like the mainland side of the island. True, hey. Yeah. Crazy. Throughout our time in the Kimberley, we've been stumbling upon ancient rock art, and Jar Island is home to a few must-see treasures. So that's what we're on the hunt to find this morning. Wow. This is very cool. It's like a rock maze. Sick. So our food hasn't exactly run low enough yet. I have always wanted to try them, but you can eat these and they've got like a, it's funny, they, they're like a blue meat apparently, but they're like good bush tucker. I guess it's a common knowledge bush tucker that someone like me knows it's a thing. Um, that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm almost tempted to harvest some and cook them, hey, just to try them. But anyway, we'll press on. That means there might be, they grow, oftentimes you find mud mussels where you find these too. Um, which is something else that I've actually never tried that I've always wanted to, so maybe we'll find some mud mussels. Could be cool. We found a pretty big cave, so that's pretty promising. We're certainly not the first people to come looking for these paintings. There's a little bit of a track, not going to lie to you. We're sort of just following that. We've come to a big cave, so it looks like the track is leading us in a promising direction. You can already see them from here. That's a pretty good sign. Look at it, just behind. Wow. Oh, these are unreal. Holy crap. So what we've seen so far are just like random paintings here or there on a rock, here or there. But this cave has got so many of them. There's heaps in here, wow. The paintings we see here are, again, Bradshaws or Goin Goin. We went into the mystery of these particular rock art forms a few videos ago, but for those of you who missed that, in short, these paintings can date back as far as 20,000 years, and the origin of where they came from is unknown, as no indigenous nation has taken artistic claim to them. That's the one we were looking for. 
Last time, we went into a theory of perhaps how these figures got to be here. So if that sparks your interest, maybe after this video, you can go check out our Lost City episode. Wow. He's on the call, eh? See. I think what's so incredible about it, like I know it's just a painting, but it's like a painting by people that were here thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago and just like living here on this island or maybe it wasn't an island back then who knows yeah it's just amazing to think that people were standing right here living and painting these i don't know it's i guess it's just like a sign of civilization or like a little society i suppose it's pretty incredible you can just imagine a group of people nestled under this rock, seeking shelter either from the harsh sun or downpouring rain, inspired to paint with the contentment of their company and surroundings. Or maybe the brushes and paints were just whipped out when the boredom set in. I've been reading about like, thinking, okay, how are they preserved in these caves? But it's something like the pores in these rocks, the red that you can see, this dark red, it's the like iron ore compound or sometimes I think it's bauxite which is what they make aluminium out of that they'll actually grind up and make the paints from and like common paints it's you, you're putting on something on a wall that's a different formula like our chemical paints now to the application surface but because they're painting with a paint made out of rock onto rock the particles of the iron can actually seep into the pores of this rock and it made me think of like a tattoo like it's sort of in the skin in a little bit like obviously it's on the surface but it's really rock on rock it's able to really bond I think that's really cool and sort of talks about or talks to how just in this little cave they've managed to last so many thousand years crazy eh? satisfied with our findings we made our way back towards the beach but not without collecting a few mud whelks and trying our luck with a fish. You're on! Come on. Oh. <laughs> what is he? Oh, he's one of those, tusky one of those tusky fish. Good fish, Mark. <laughs> Tiny little fish. <laughs> leaving Jar Island behind. We had a nice little explore. Uh, we're gonna head a couple more bays up for the night. Apparently there is a bit of fresh water which would be nice to, of course, have a fresh water shower. <laughs> Literally, it's a big part of um, what I'm searching for in our cruising life is fresh water. So if I can find it, I'll be very happy. Freshwater Bay is just over 10 miles from Jar Island. However, with the wind on the nose and slowly picking up, we're going to be giving our new dinghy air riding system a run for its money. Maybe should have put the tender up, hey? We're almost there, almost there. Just hold on for just one more mile. <laughs> Well, we've just anchored in Freshwater Bay and um, I think we, we can reflect that <laughs> our davit system doesn't work in 20 knots, 30 degrees off the nose. Yes. Oh. I think it's suitable for downwind, but it didn't like beating into it, did it? But we've given the Rolls Royce a well needed wash. We have, haven't we? I've washed my Rari. <laughs> I'm looking how good it looks again. So much mud has come off, actually. I don't like that the fuel hose is floating in salt water, but... Yeah. Fully oh, yeah. I mean, 
poor man's davits. I'm not, I haven't written the idea off. It's not when you're beating into 20 knots. We weren't sure if we're going to like them or whatever, but I've wanted to try these for a while. So we just grabbed two each. Yeah, I put them in a little bag just to let them soak in some salt water for a bit and hopefully get any of the residual mud out of them. Hopefully they'll taste a little bit cleaner. You can cook them on coals of a fire, I've read, or boil them is what the indigenous used to either chuck them on the coals or boil them. We're not going to light a fire this afternoon, so we'll boil them. And then um, so I've just had the idea that we'll chop some butter and garlic in it and make them, make them proper. Could be horrible, could be nice. We'll see how, see how they are. I'm going to give them a quick little scrub. And now we wait. And say goodbye snails. Goodbye snails. But now we wait, but we don't know how long we wait. So I'm just gonna like boil the f out of them. Boy. Yeah, how long do we wait? Should know. we just maybe, we should probably Google it. Hey Siri, how long does it take to boil a mud whelk? I so, found this on the web. A bit of an odd request for Siri, eh? <laughs> Succulent mud crab. <laughs> We don't want succulent mud crab. I can't catch a mud crab. Hey Siri, how to cook a mud whelk? Here's what I found. 32 ways to use a gallon of milk. <laughs> <laughs> it's like boiling an egg maybe. Boiling an egg. Let's just go with eggs. Seven minutes for hard boiled. We definitely want them hard. I don't want soft slugs. Set timer for seven minutes. Or I reckon five. Seven minutes. Down. No, seven will do it. Boiled egg? Yeah, boiled egg, seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> seven minutes. <laughs> the water's definitely changed colour. Now we have to somehow try and get them out. I've heard that you need like a hooky thing and then you don't want it to break halfway, so I'll find something. Safety pin. Oh, you got one! I don't know about it! That's the mud it's been eating. Like, that's all its mud sack. That's not going to taste nice, that's going to taste like mud. I'm not keen on that. I don't know if I'm keen. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite the escargot that I envisioned. We kind of figured that there'd be like escargot or something like that. I've never tried escargot, obviously. You have? It's good? It's like a muddier version of escargot. <laughs> I don't even think butter and garlic would like... Disguise the mud. Disguise the mud or like... There's the too much mud in them, yeah. It's a bit, yeah, I don't know. We've got like a beautiful Spanish mackerel that we caught the other day that we're still trying to get through, so I think we'll just pass on the entree, just skip straight to the main. Yeah, alright, chucks the whelks. <laughs> So yes, we caught that massive mackerel and we've been just trying to get through it. We haven't really filmed much of eating it, but we have been smashing it as much as we can. We gave a little bit away and otherwise we've been cooking like luxes with it, wraps, lots of different other things. Tonight I'm doing a bit of a like a lemony spinach pasta using frozen spinach and literally just Spanish mackerel, so not too many ingredients in this one. Uh, we still do have fresh food, but obviously we try not to eat them all at once, everything at all at once, so yeah. Well, we said it was going to be a day in the life, but nothing on a boat gets done quickly when your traveling pace is similar to that of a mud whelk. So yesterday was all about positioning ourselves close to fresh water. And today, after grinding away on the laptops, 
Yes, we do that more often than not. Going mad in paradise, eh? I don't know why we do it, honestly. Studying in the Kimberleys. I'm so over it. Almost there. We fueled up. Thanks, baby. Mm. Yum. It's like a smoothie soup. It's like a soup. Soup smoothie. And began preparing ourselves for an abundance of fresh water. Today, we've got a little bit of fresh water left over. This is like our shower slash collecting. Jerry, this water had a bit of iron in it, so we haven't been drinking it, but we've been showering in it. And today we're gonna wash some clothes and hopefully this creek up here has got good drinking water. And um, we'll top the tanks back up. Might do a few little runs. Anyway. Freaky how much dirt already comes out. I know, right? Our sails are a grotty bunch. All right, gonna leave that to soak for a sec. We'll go wash ourselves, collect some other water, you know, have a bit of an explore, and hopefully most of the hard work's done for us. Just like the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, lying at the end of this narrow mangrove creek was the beautiful sight of fresh water. Wowee, I was not expecting it to be like this. This is like a beautiful little swimming hole. I'd love to find somewhere good to get the water, but any of this is probably fine. No. I know <laughs> trucks can't, can't climb very well, but it's still a bit spooky swimming in water. Oh, that's nice. Oh. <laughs> Woo. Oh. Pretty damn nice. What do you reckon? Good enough for the tanks? Mm. We've assessed the water quality. I reckon we'll fill up the tanks here. Should get us through to the next little island cluster where there's a bit of water. Do some clean washing, clean ourselves, fill the tanks. What more could go wrong? I mean, well, what more could go well? Perfect here. Love it. What do you reckon? Pretty nice. Pretty good, eh? Oh, would you mind turning my jerry can back up? Oh, is the jerry can not meant to be like that? No, that was a, a fault. A fault in the system? Could we not just put it like this? It'll take, you uh, could, but I feel like it'll take ages. That's all Is it working? Real bush mechanics up here, eh? Yeah. After deeming the water was good for drinking, we went back to the boat to pour our other two jerry cans into the tanks and brought them back to the waterfall to collect some more water. It's pretty amazing just having endless water, honestly. We've never cruised like it before. We've never been so not stressed about water consumption. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's been, been a delight. <laughs> there is also something quite therapeutic about collecting your own water. Sourcing, collecting, and then lugging brings with it a whole new level of appreciation for every drop that comes out of our tap. 
and even more so because of the creepy, large and cold-blooded killers that you have to contend with to get your hands on it. We've got a ground coming in, so you can see it's super shallow. We're gonna try and paddle out. Hopefully not get eaten by a croc. It's just kind of scary. There's just a rock underneath us. I think so. I'll still hold, I'll still hold the paddle as a croc defender stick. It is croc it out too. We're a little bit silly. This is probably the sussest thing we've done in the tender so far. I like doing laundry, you know, normally you're like, oh, about laundry, but I love getting back to like these types of basics. I don't know, there's something really nice about it, like just doing laundry with a bucket with some water that you found. I think it's about the process of doing it, like it makes you appreciate like how far washing machines have come, but yeah. like it's just the process. Also, I think because we don't spend so much time on our laptop screens, although it doesn't look like it that it's such a nice way to like, for me, it's a bit of an unwinding practice as well. It's nice. Anything, anything not beat on a laptop screen is great. <laughs> Chilly. Living like, life on the edge you are, like literally. Look at it, fucking massive. What have we got tonight? Two sharks and heaps of little fish. Chili? No. No, 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 no. She wants to go forwards. <laughs> That's it. That's all the mackerel that we caught about like Probably literally a week ago. Gone. We were nervous landing that fish. By far the biggest fish we've ever landed. He is heavy. I wonder how many kilos he is. And now we're eating the last of it. We got through it. We smashed it. Tomorrow, I get to put the lure back in the water. We're out of fish. I can catch another one. I'm frothing. We don't like to have more than one fish on the fly because, you know, we want to eat what we catch before we murder something else. So, Lua's going in the water tomorrow, guys. Wish me luck. Subscribe if you haven't. We're going to have fish tacos. Pretty keen on it. Got some chipotle mayo, some lettuce, tomatoes. We're running pretty low. I reckon we've got another week of fresh food because we started this trip like a week behind on provisions with the whole coming out of the water and everything. So I reckon we've got like a week of things with colour left in them and then we're sort of onto the like rice, condiments, noodles and whatever we can catch diet. So we're going to enjoy this. Mmm. Oh, I still even some crunch in the lettuce and the tomato. You wouldn't believe it. Oh, Mexican fish. Yeah, put that down and get into this. 
Well guys, if you're still here, thank you for sticking around. We really hope you enjoyed the change of pace for this week's video. A massive thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. And as always, a thank you to our patrons for making each and every video possible. We'll catch you next week if you're lucky. Yours sincerely, Slim and Soph.